So Decred 101, um, my name is Dennis Seitz. I'm a user interface designer and contractor for Decred. I've been working with them for a little over a year. Uh, in today's presentation, we're going to talk. We're going to talk about basics of Decred, how Decred uh, governance works in a very simple terms. Um, who makes project decisions? Uh, who manages the funds? And how Decred is unique compared to Bitcoin because it's very very similar to, to that. All right, so Decred is essentially a hybrid blockchain, which means you can mine and you can stake your coins. Uh, we briefly uh, talked about hard fork voting. That, that's basically part, part of the governance that allows people to make decisions on new implementations, change of the protocol. Um, that's all thanks to Polytab, which is the system we use. Uh, development fund, uh, you probably saw on the websites and, and social media, um, we're in the process of releasing this um, fund to our stakeholders. It's not fully implemented yet, but we can start with proposals and start getting some actual real proposal from companies to uh, manage our marketing, manage our PR, and so on. And the Polytail, which is the platform I just talked about. You mentioned a particular uh, type of voting that you use. Excuse me? So for the, on the hard fork voting? Yes. So you said that what mechanism you use for voting? So we use Polytab, which is basically the system that allows stakeholders to make decisions. So let's say tomorrow you come in and you say, you know, I have this great idea for your project, and I think it would be beneficial to the entire network and to its stakeholders. You can submit a proposal in this system uh, outlining your goals, milestones, and um, the cost, obviously, that it would cost to implement. So it's not a system for you to just come in and say, this is what I would like to do and you all take care of it. So you would have to come in with a team of people that would actually take care of it. So that, that, would, that, that would be a solution to that. All right, so block reward. As you all know, in Bitcoin, 100% of block reward goes directly to miners, people who actually own the hardware. They are in reality 100% in control of what's happening to the currency itself. As you've seen, we had many hard forks like Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Diamond, Bitcoin Unlimited, and it's just, it never stops because people can simply go in, as long as they have hardware to mine the chain, and they are the only one in control of it, they can do pretty much whatever they want. I personally find it damaging to the, to the brand itself and to the project, because you're splitting not just actual token, but you're also splitting people. You know, all of those people that were initially interested in Bitcoin, now you have this community that got split in two, having Bitcoin Cash, and then what happens is you, you end up having a lot of people screaming at each other, uh, you know, trying to diminish the other project, which I just find absolutely useless. So in Decred, we have, uh, we've, we've found a solution on how to keep check and balances in place, right? How do we, how do we manage how do we control miners so they don't do hard forks, they don't damage the network? And we basically created this proportion, which is 60% of the block reward, which is 25 decred. 60% of it goes to proof of work miners. 30% goes to people who stake their decred. So they're, they lock it in their wallet and they just keep it there and they vote on proposals. And 10% of this block reward goes directly into this development fund, which is controlled by stakeholders. This 10% is crucial because that allows us to pay people for the work they do. And in other cases that would not be possible. For example, in Bitcoin, um, there's really not a solution or incentive for, for new developers to come in because there's no funding behind it. So a lot of it is just based on donations and goodwill. And not, it's not always the best thing. So here we have a little video, uh, which basically explains um, the difference between Bitcoin and Decred and why Decred is unique. Decred is a cryptocurrency which builds upon the strengths of Bitcoin. To see how Decred is unique, let's compare the two. Both Bitcoin and Decred have a 21 million coin supply cap. Here's where things get interesting. 
Bitcoin's mining subsidy is reduced by 50% every four years as shown by the stepped graph. Decred reduces its mining subsidy smoothly and gradually by 1% every 21 days as shown by this curve. New Bitcoin blocks are found and broadcast by proof-of-work miners who also receive 100% of the Bitcoin reward. This gives miners all the power, leaving users without a way to coordinate and change the rules regarding what blocks are considered valid. This leaves open the possibility for hard forks in the chain. Decred aims to improve on this by implementing a system of checks and balances on its proof-of-work miners, giving its users more say in Decred's development. It works like this. Once a new Decred block is found by a proof-of-work miner, the validity of that block is decided by a consensus vote cast by five stake voters. If a majority vote deeming the block valid is not achieved, the newly found block is immediately rejected by the network. If a block is deemed valid, then the new minted Decred coins are split 60-30. 60% goes to the proof-of-work miners for finding the block, and 30% goes to the stake voters for doing their part to secure the chain. Decred's hybridized mining system makes sure that its chain will never split. The differences don't stop there. 10% of every Decred block reward is placed in the Decred Development Fund. The Development Fund makes Decred a self-funded open source project with no need for outside capital or an ICO. How the development fund is spent is determined by the community. Through the project proposal website, users get to vote on ideas to improve the network and select the development team to complete them. Decred is controlled by the community. To become part of the Decred community, go to decred.org to download the user software for your platform and get Decred on exchanges such as Bittrex and Poloniex. Decred. Decentralized credits. So that kind of reinforces a little bit what I just spoke about. Uh, kind of explains how things are separated and who governs what. All right. So next thing is a roadmap. So for 2018, the rest of this year and 2019, as you can see, Polytab and SPU for mobile wallet is already live. Uh, Polytab, like I mentioned, it's a place where People can vote on things. Um, SPV wallet, it's a simplified payment verification, which means that funds are sent faster through people and um, they don't have to download the entire blockchain basically to your phone. Um, we have privacy in development. That means that you're going to be able to send your tokens between different wallets um, anonymously. And we also have Lightning Network, which basically increases the speed of transactions and the amount of transactions on the chain, and we have DAX, which is decentralized exchange um, in the development. Uh, decentralized exchange, if you're not familiar with it, basically, we are trying to prevent um, hacks and things like that. Um, many years ago, we had empty docs got hacked for hundreds of millions of dollars, because what happens is you have these figures behind it who essentially hold your private keys, right? And, and I mean, nothing stops them from just taking your keys and closing the office, and that's pretty much it. Uh, where decentralized exchange doesn't have uh, a figure behind it, it's literally everything is done by the code back in the system. So when you exchange your coins, like for example, you could send 10 Decred and you wanted to exchange them for Bitcoin, you can do it directly through our system, and there is no gatekeeper on the other end that would hold your funds. So technically, you're never sending your private keys to anyone. You're exchanging it directly on your computer. It's very similar to Shapeshift, if you're familiar with it. Um, another thing that I did not include here, we do have uh, Android and iOS application in development. We're currently testing it, so you'll be able to have your funds directly on your, on your phone and be able to monitor or vote directly from there. And here we are. Uh, like we mentioned previously, um, the best feature probably in Decred is that you know, having the ability for people to vote on things and decide what direction to take is probably the best feature you can have. Um, not all projects, unfortunately, have it. So, this is it. Let's get into questions. If you guys have any, I'd be happy to answer them. Sure. Sure. Uh, so, you have 21 million coins that can be mined. And so, with projects like your project, and then I know that there are projects with a different algorithm, similar sort of uh, 
concepts for yes. uh, like uh, list those kind of models that you do like startup. But when you what is the end game if you know if you say we're going to take 10 percent of the mine, yes. when you get to the end when there is no more mining, what is the plan at that? It's uh, so first of all to start it's gonna be a very long time and not, it's not gonna be in our lifetime to get there. Um, you can Take a look at Bitcoin. So right now you're at what 17 million, and it has another over 100 years to go before it ends. But the ultimate goal, same same for Bitcoin and same for Decred. By the end, by the time we get there, the amount of uh, you know, if we end up mining the entire infrastructure, the entire 20, 21 million, basically the transaction fees are going to be high enough, and the network is going to grow enough to sustain the whole ecosystem just with um, fees. Obviously at that point we're not going to have a funding because fee won't go inside development fund. And that's so, so, would, so would you, in your governance, you could vote for increased transaction fees to go into that, That's possible. Um, that's also possible, um, you know, 50 years from now, people can say, you know, we would like to increase supply limit to... Um, this, this Miners. 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 Yes. But, if you remember, stakeholders need to still approve their block. If stakeholders don't approve their block, they don't get paid. Yes. How are those stakeholders, you said that five people? Yes. How are those five selected and who are those five? So, the, basically, we have, we use a system, ticketing system, basically. We have a uh, system tries to keep 41,000 tickets in the system at all times, and the price of the ticket fluctuates based on the demand. So the more people try to stake it, the higher price for the ticket. Right? The less people stake it, the, high, the higher reward gets. Um, so these tickets, when they get locked, they stay in the system live until they get called up and bought, and it's completely random. So there is nothing that decides, okay, we're going to take the first 100 tickets, it's completely random, so your ticket can vote within the next day, or it can vote within 20 days. And, 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 and so miners have those tickets, or, or, or wallet holders have those tickets? Miners don't have, I mean, they can, technically, technically, they can, uh, you know, the decred they mine, the reward that they receive, instead of selling it, they can, they can stake it too. But the tickets itself, Stakeholders, they can purchase tickets through our wallet, and they basically—that's how they get the vote. So, so the ticket purchase is separate from the decred uh, purchase. So that's separate purchase. Ticket. So decred, you can purchase decred as tokens and hold them. Period. If you wanted to participate in a governance where you can be more active and read proposals and decide on what's the next step. That is our way to reward people for the particip participation in that network. So no one, you know, you're not obligated to stake your decred if you don't want to. But you have to have enough decred to purchase a, a voting right, basically. How many is that? Right now, I believe it's around 100. Does that answer your question? To a certain extent. To a certain extent. How can I, how can I explain it better? This tickets that you said that there are 41,000 tickets out there. Yeah. So how do I access to get those tickets in there? So okay. Is there 100, yeah. 100 tickets I have and then if I... Uh, so how, how do, do you get it in there? So okay. I just that. So let's say, so I'm going to actually gonna be doing another keynote later, uh, a little bit more um, in detail on how to stake, how to buy your first ticket, how to stake it, and so the, this entire process. but. In simple words, you were, so let's say you go to, to any of the exchanges, you buy Decred, right? You install the wallet on your computer. I Decred right now, I just checked it on $40. Okay, so it's $4,000, let's say, to get a ticket, right? So you buy enough Decred to purchase a ticket. You put them in your wallet. As soon as the ballot's cleared, you can click on the tab that says Tickets. In there, you can see, basically, you can just purchase automatically, and it's going to pick the, the as soon as, uh, as soon as it's available, it's going to buy you a ticket, and you can either. So when I'm buying the ticket, who's getting those hundred? Uh, so here's 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 the difference. So you can either uh, solo stake it, which means 
your computer needs to be online 24 seven with an open wallet. So when the pool, the, the blockchain calls your vote or your, your ticket, your computer needs to be online and ready to submit your uh, preferences, right? If, you're, if you, you can't keep your, your wallet open all the times, you can use stake pools. Which basically, these are uh, you know group of people that hold many different servers around the world and they are online 24 seven. So pers I personally use stake, staking pool just because I can I don't have time to you know, have my computer on all the time and my wallet open. So what happens is when you purchase a ticket, the delegating, you're delegating voting rights to that tick, to that stake pool. You're not sending away your, your ticket technically, you're simply giving them a right to vote for you. So that basically that pool, as soon as it gets cold, that pool submits uh, you know, your preference to the net. And what happens at that point, as soon as it voted, you get back the, the, the 100 card that you spent, so you're getting the entire ticket back, plus you're getting, uh, it's 1.2%, so it's 1.2 decred back as a reward for staking. So you're spending 100 and you're getting back 101 and two. As soon as your ticket votes, you basically get them back. It's automatic, it just gets back to your wallet. And so it's the first time you so, oh, so uh, ticket can be used for or just use only once for you, What's that? Sorry. Can I use that same ticket again? You can, you can. So you can, you know, that you buy a ticket, it votes, your funds get back to your wallet. At the next day, you can purchase a new ticket. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So, so one ticket is used, you know, once. Exactly, exactly. And and just so you understand, we may have ten different proposals in the system. It doesn't mean that you need to have 10 different tickets to vote on 10 different proposals. One ticket means that you vote on the entire network. So you can vote on different proposals, so select your preferences on each proposal, and that ticket submits preferences for each one. All right? And you use only once. Yes. Then you can just rebuy it. Yeah, you, you have to, the only thing you have to remember is that when you buy a ticket, it gets into the stage of unmined and immature for 24 hours. And at, after that, it becomes live, and it can vote at any time. Usually, it votes within 21 days. Uh, no, it doesn't come from development funds. So the block, it's 25 decred, right? The block, when, when the block is found, it's 25 decred. So you take that 25 decred, you split it, you give 60% to proof of work, you give 30%, that's the, your 30%. So 30% off of the block reward. That's how you get the reward. Exactly, exactly. It doesn't come from development. So my second question. Sure. Was the, um, so when you buy the ticket, mm -hmm. you're, 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 you're essentially staking. And so that is, when you say you're voting for whether a block is good or not, it's validating against the blockchain in your wallet or on your wallet pool. I mean, that's where I'm a little confused because usually um, uh, when you're mining, a block is validated against the blockchain. Mm -hmm. And so you're performing, so that vote is really, you're validating the blockchain of that. Block. We're validating each block, basically. Right. So when you say there's a, you're not really voting yes or no on it, you're just, just matching the, against your yes. blockchain. Yes, exactly. Okay. So you don't have to select a preference. Yes, that block is valid for each single block because blocks are five minutes apart. Right. But if tomorrow something goes wrong and let's say we have a new company that comes up with miners that are trying to do something completely different, we can submit a proposal that can address that issue and people can invalidate all of the blocks produced by these miners. Technically, is it possible that you guys could, somebody could make a proposal to validate basic? Absolutely. And then you guys would have to figure out it. It's, it's possible. That yeah. seems very Absolutely. Possible. We, we actually, we embrace ASICs right. because we believe, uh, first of all, it brings stability to the network. Um, to buy ASIC, it's a major investment for people. And we believe it's actually a good thing. So we, we, are, we welcome ASICs and uh, we don't have any issues with them. Um, but, we do have that ability. I mean, th that's why we have Polytag, we have a governance. 
it allows you to make those decisions. Obviously, it has to be, um, it has to have a 75% uh, approval rate. So it's not 51%. 75% of stakeholders need to agree on that. And that's going to happen. Yes? Questions. One, um, have you been hacked? Has the system been hacked and um, when it's stolen? It's probably out of the exchange if it has. No. Secondly, is this um, breakup of pallet blocks or split up? Is that, is that the thing that's helped keep your coin more valuable, or, or is there something else that? Okay, so the first question, uh, no, we never, so the blockchain itself never been hacked. Uh, we did not have any uh, funds, to my knowledge, stolen from exchanges. Um, that's because most of our um, stakeholders keep their private keys in their own wallet and they use stake pools to vote. Uh, using stake pools is very safe. You're, like I said, you're not sending your actual decard to them. You're not sharing your private keys. You're simply sharing the right to vote. That's it. So that question, no. And um, to your second question, um, how does the split, right, in 60, 30, and 10%, right, how does that influence? Uh, I guess, what do you think has maintained the value of your token? The value? The value. I think the, the dollar amount. Yeah, I think the value of the token is maintained by um, the long-term vision. And what I mean by that, if you look at our current supply, which is around 8.5 million tokens, um, half of that is locked. So half of that is locked in the staking process. So that means that people can't just, if, even if tomorrow the price goes really high, well, a lot of these stakeholders can't really pull their tickets out. So once you purchase a ticket and it's live, you can't simply decide, oh, I changed my mind, I want to pull my coins out and I want to sell it. Instead, you have to wait for your ticket to vote and at that point you can sell them. So knowing that, I think holding your coins, people you know, willing to lock their investments for that period of 21 days and in some rare circumstances up to 144 days because after 144 days, if your ticket did not vote, it expires, which means that basically at that point you are very, very unlucky. There's a, I believe, 0.5% chance that it will not vote within 144 days. It happened to me once in two years, uh, but what happens at that point, you simply get your uh, purchase ticket, purchase uh, decred what back. Uh, it was 0.5%, so 90, yeah. 95% uh, of tickets have a chance to vote within the first 21 days. It's a pretty, usually within a month they vote. Uh, like I said, in some rare circumstances, they would get uh, expired or they can miss a vote. Um, that happens when you know, services like stake pool that you use, or if you use your own computer, if it goes offline, or there's, I don't know, electricity, something happens, and when the blockchain calls your vote, and it's not there, or it's not online, that's gonna make your ticket miss the vote, basically. You said there's no, there's no additional compensation that you got to if, if, so if you, like when you miss a ticket? Or, or let's say your point, your, your situation, 144 days. Yes. So it goes by. You just get your original investment, so you basically lost any return other than whatever. You don't get you don't get any reward. That's the yeah. That's simply. But you, uh, don't, but you don't control whether or not that ticket is called. I there there's no control over it, and it's completely random. We have something like 25 staking pools. Different. Um, some of them are really big. Some of them are smaller. Uh, some of them have certain fees. So some charge one percent fee, right? That means that of your reward, if your reward is 1.2 decred, right? The fee for the pool would be, what, uh, 0.012, it would be pennies, basically, on your reward. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yes, so if you go on our website and you look at staking pools, you'll see we have around 20, 30 of them. Uh, some of them charge all the way to 7%, some charge 5%, some 1%, and some 0 You know, you basically donate whatever you want. Um, that goes, it, it kind of, it's kind of based on, 
you know, how popular is the pool. Uh, I personally like to look at reliability of the pool. So if you look at the filters and you see missed tickets, I like to, to pick pools that, are, that, that have a very low percentage of missed tickets. To me, it means simply it's reliable. Uh, there are very few tickets lost, and you, know, the amount, you can see the amount of people participating in that pool. Sir. Sure. Seven percent. Seven percent. Oh well, that, that would have to be your choice because you would have to physically pick a specific pool to use. You you would get you would get one point one nine nine five. Okay. You would get sometimes. Yeah. Percentage charge on the on the on the reward side, two. not not on the on the okay. price of your ticket okay. plus reward, only on your reward. Yes. At the young lady's question over here, what's the business case behind D credit? I mean, like Factum has got the mortgage business and yep. Homeland Security. What's the business case behind D credit? So D credit is very similar to Bitcoin. It's a, first of all, it's a store of value. There's no business case behind Bitcoin either. So there's the, it's a store of value to start. Mm -hmm. Then Polytel, which is the system that stores all the data, has many cases which can be used to store birth certificates, documents, any kind of information can be stored directly off-chain, basically. Isn't that in competition with Factum? Uh, I, don't, I don't see it as a competition. I really see it as a, a separate entity that does something different. Separate entity? But what's different? Well, they do it in, in their own way. They do it in a different way. But, but the end result is similar? It is. Okay. As for many of these projects. It's simply the, the difference, if I'm correct though, in factum, are these, and you correct me if I'm wrong, are these stored on chain directly? That's my understanding. Okay. But so, I'm not an expert. Yeah. So, a little, I, I would say I would add a difference though, are um, you know, files and things like that you would like to store, they're stored off chain. So, which means only a hash of the document that you're submitting is included in the blockchain. Which means when you're creating a new wallet and you have to re-download the entire chain, for example, if you do it for Bitcoin, you would have to download something like 80 gigabytes of data to your computer in order to download the entire chain. With Decred, you're downloading only transactions and the blocks. You're not downloading the whole data. So if tomorrow we have 500 terabytes of data, just actual data, we're not storing it directly into blockchain. We're storing it off-chain, but it's encrypted and connected to the blockchain. You think it's, I mean, the big advantage of storing it on the blockchain, to my knowledge, no blockchain has ever been hacked. Well, that's the same, the same concept, but okay. the entire data is encrypted in the same way, and the only way for you to unlock this data is to have that hash key. Okay. And basically, you're the only person really able to unlock it, no one else uh, on the correct When you say hash key, like private key? Yeah, okay. basically something like that, yeah. It's Thank called you. Marco key. You're welcome. And, and like I said, sorry, uh, you know, this is, you know, we, we look at Politea and, and it's, it's definitely evolving. We just, last month we had someone uh, register first birth certificate on the, on, on the chain. So there are so many use cases that we're still exploring and I think we're still in a, in a pretty early stage. Um, a lot of use cases are still developing, I'd say. Good. Yes. Okay, so when you miss a ticket, let's say you had your ticket for 30 days, right? And you got a notification in your wallet that this ticket has missed a vote. You will get an option, and that happens only if your ticket missed a vote. You will get an option that offers you to revoke your ticket. So let's say the pool that you're using is having troubles you can actually revoke your voting rights from that pool and just stake it somewhere else instead of waiting to get, to get cold again. That happens. That, I mean, you could basically revoke it right away and restake it, or you can leave it, and the chances are the same. I mean, literally, if it misses today, it can vote the next day or the next two days. 
it's random. Yeah, but I can tell you, like from from my experience, and I've been staking for two years, and my average vote is around 22 days. I had one ticket in two years that missed, and one that expired. Uh, so it's a very low chance, but it happens. Yeah. Good thing I got my money back. <laughs> Yes, so our developers are actually uh, working on a way to uh, do ticket splitting. So let's say I have 20 Decred, you have 50. So you can have a group of friends that can, uh, you know, combine their funds and to basically purchase one ticket. That once it votes, the reward gets divided by the percentage of Decred invested by each one of them. So in this case, you don't have to put up front the entire 100 decred, we could be just collectively creating our own little pool. So it'd be like two miners staking there. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And we could do that on the side anyways, but you're saying you're going to incorporate it into the Yes, we're going to incorporate it into, into our wallet. Yes. Absolutely. That's going to, you've noticed this because even with 100 decred, $4,000 is still a lot of money. You know, and some people want to come in with a few hundred bucks. And valuation. Exactly. And valuation goes up. That becomes ten thousand. I mean, they've been in those cases, and so we had a you know our community. We listen, and this is something that they want, and we definitely want to deliver. And we do have a tech, like a working beta already, um, but it's a very much. It would involve some technical skills. We're trying to make it very user friendly, where you could just go into our wallet and say split, and you just find people who are doing it. You don't have to trust each other. Uh, it's all done. Like two months, because exactly. there is this yeah, five. Exactly. So and that will give ability for people with a hundred dollars to come in. There, there's probably going to be a limit on what's the minimum entry, because you don't want your reward to be lower than the fees that you pay for the ticket. Any other questions? Go ahead. No, no, please do. Uh, the question is this: um, Bitcoin has like seventeen million. Said, yes. Uh, Yes, okay, uh, I'm yeah. not sure, but I think yeah, it's going to be. Yeah, you have seven million. When do you think Bitcoin actually had seven uh, lines? Because they, they've gone up yeah. by still trying to figure out all the mm -hmm. credit as a similar yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, that's a good comparison, you know, because the two projects are very similar. So uh, I can't, you know, promise that this is going to happen, but if you look at the supply and demand, and considering that Decred has 50% of its uh, token locked, where, where Bitcoin, you, you just store them offline or you, they're moving around. There's 17 that are moving around. In Decred, you really have four that are moving around, even though you have eight and a half million in, this, in circulation. So I think in time, uh, it will increase in terms of its value. Uh, just because if we get to 10 million, you're probably gonna have more than five, five million locked. So there's always this deficit of tokens on the network that you can purchase. I would be curious to look at... I would be curious to see where Bitcoin was when it was at 8 million. You just said okay. Q3 2011. How much? How was it? What was the, the price of the token at that point? Okay, that's fine. Cool. Hundred bucks. I mean, I, we never know. Is there any other questions? Well, thank you very much. How, how do you mine Decred? Uh, so, up to recently, you could use your graphic card mm -hmm. from your computer. Uh, we had a lot of companies actually develop i6 miner, so um, you have to purchase uh, dedicated hardware uh, to be able to mine it. And the same places that you saw Bitcoin mining can be used. Was that sir? The same. Uh, no. So decred miners are they are Blake 256 14 rounds, which means that with that um, protocol you can only mine decred. So companies that invested millions of dollars in decred miners, that that hardware, once it's done, 
they can't just flip a switch and start mining Bitcoin or some other coin. It is dedicated to you, right? So I see it as an investment in the project. What, what about what, excuse me? You said it's something that Bezos wants to put like, on. It's late, late 256, 14 lines. So I could use like an S9 miner to mm -hmm. mine the Well, no, no, you can't use that one, no. Because that's Blake to uh, SHA 256. Oh, this is not? No. It's just Blake. Just decrypt, yes. The, you know, there. who knows? Maybe they will develop uh, miners that do dual mining. Like they had previously, they, they graphic cards, you could mine Ethereum and also dual mine decrypt at the same time. Now it's, it's no longer profitable. So that's the cost of mining, right? Yeah, that's the cost of one of the ASIC miners that's happening right now. So it's about four thousand dollars. You any base who will decrypt lines when you like go to stock or make actual real world purchases? Uh, to actually purchase things? Yeah, the real physical goods and things. So crypto crypto emporium, which is a website, uh, e-commerce website, uh, you can pretty much buy anything from small items to cars and houses with decrypt. Crypto importer, yes. About the jet online. Um, yeah, I mean they, they do. Um, it's a reputable site. They do. Um, they allow you to basically purchase um, pretty much anything you want. But we do have you know some mer merchants that are trying to kind of accept. And I think the next step for us to be to create, like I said, mobile application that would allow them to run uh, their POS system directly on their computers in their um, stores. Or we're far away from there, but we're way behind Bitcoin. Does that answer your questions? Okay. Thank you. I, I'm selling my apartment in Italy, if anyone's interested in you. <laughs> <laughs> Just for uh, your information, it was by December 31st, 2011. A lot changed since then. Yeah. yeah, a lot changed. Very interesting. Well, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Guys.